Welcome back to the show. I'm Jenny McCarthy Wahlberg. Joining me, one of my only couple guests this week that I'm very excited about, Dylan Efron. He's joining us. He's such a cool guy. If you guys have not checked out his YouTube series, I highly suggest doing so. It's called Flow State with Dylan Efron. He's joining us. Hey, Dylan, welcome. Hey, thanks for having me. This is awesome. Of course, of course. Um, I, my first question right out of the gate is, do you have a girlfriend? <laughs> I do, I do. Yeah, I've been I've been with my girlfriend a long time. So Well, I'm I'm very happy for you. You deserve that because <laughs> you. you do watching the show, not that I was interested, but I know plenty <laughs> of girls, one in particular named Nicole, um, that um are are just huge, you know, fans. They're they geek out watching you. But I can see why, because diving into your show, you're down to earth, you're smart. Um, obviously you get consciousness because, uh, you have a show called flow state and you're in it, you're, you're into it. Um, where, where did this side come from? This kind of flow state side? Um, I guess it all came from, um, this. Yeah. So I, I guess I've been behind the camera for the last five years or so. Like I left college and I went straight to behind the camera and my brother was the one that was always on camera, the guy who would like, hey, Zach, sing. And, and he would sing on the spot. It was just so, so, so good at like st- tell, storytelling and everything. I was always the shy guy behind the camera. So I think uh, just as I got more comfortable with who I am and, and uh, realizing that like, like I, I'm a beginner by trade. I, I, I love doing, I love learning. I love learning new things at a, at a like way later on in life than I should have. And, uh, I'm starting to realize that I think I can do this on, on front of camera. So, Hell yeah. Yeah. So, I, so I think it was just one of those steps that like, I didn't have social media until I graduated college. So I was just oh, a little wow. late to the game on, on everything. So I'm still learning about all this stuff, but, but you know, what's cool. Fun. I got to tell you, Dylan, that never goes away, that trait, because I'm one of those people. I love to learn things. I love to explore. I'm curious. I want that information. And I'm an old lady now. And let me tell you, I'm still wanting to learn. Like, I'll take up sewing. I'll take up this. I'll start that. I'm like taking a sign language class. Like, you name it. It just is a constant state. I feel like life to me is a blank canvas. And it's our opportunity to splat as much shit on there as possible. Absolutely. And I think you're the same way. Like you said, you've written a book, you you have a radio show, you're like, there's so many ways that our lives can go. And I think just having, um, like, I have like a broad, big goals that I'll set. And then along the way, it's amazing the the path you get there That's and all right. the little goals that you set that you achieve on the way. So it, it yeah, I don't know. It's really, I, I love- it's really the flow state. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's where it becomes like a lot of the stuff I do is, uh, I'm just taking that risk and whether it's learning how to surf, like I did, I didn't know how to surf very well at all. And I just like, I made that decision. I I need to learn this. So now I'm, I'm trying to get better at that. It's rock climbing. It's, it's everything. So uh, yeah, I think, I think not being afraid to fail is one of the things that defines me. So yeah. A hundred percent. And a lot of people can relate to that. What do you do though, when you're faced with obstacles. Like there's things that I've put out an intention, a goal. And I'm like, why the fuck can't I make this happen? Like, it's just dead end, dead end, dead end, dead end, dead end. And it forces me to kind of pivot. And looking back, of course, now, since I've been in the business 25 years or something, um, I understand why I took that direction. I, if I went with the flow, if we're going to use this word now, um, if I went with the flow, it would have been much easier because I feel like life does do those signposts to be like, there's dead ends for a reason, bitch. You're supposed to pivot yeah. here. Have yeah. you come across those moments that challenge you to say like, I want this to happen, but it's just not. And how do you get past that? Yeah, I think it's not being afraid to change because I think if you if you keep trying and your your every sign's telling you to stop, you're not going to go anywhere. So I think being able to being able to say like, okay, I'm not going to pursue it the same way, and and not being af- like I failed, and not not in a bad way, but just like okay, like this didn't work. Let's try something new. And uh, I think I felt that in triathlon. Like I again, I was trying to fit myself in this box. Like I'm going to become a pro triathlete. I'm doing everything for that. And then I, I saw where my life was going and I had become risk averse. I was like, just not, I, I was living one step away from injury because I was just so beat down from this. Wow. I'm like, what's my, what's my end goal here? It's like to do this the rest of my life until I like have 
terrible knees and shit. So, right. so I, I was like, all right, I think that that was failed. But what did I learn? And I was like, I learned that when I completed an Ironman, like I was proud of myself, but like that was just an achievement I needed to do. But people weren't necessarily interested in that. They want to know me. Like they, they right. didn't care. They didn't care if I got 10 hours or whatever my goal was. <laughs> they, they wanted to hear me like the reflections on it and like what I learned from that. And I think that was like a big learning curve for me was it's not the result that I like. Right. There's, a ego, there's an ego that I was facing that I, I felt like I needed to do something when you know, that's pretty woke for you at your age, too, because a lot of people don't identify that. They're too caught up in that identity that um, that will break them if they don't reach that. Instead, they don't realize if they just go inward and accept them who they are at that level they're at right now, they're gold. They're beautiful. Yep. Just yep. the way you are. <laughs> why, why do you think we put so many expectations on ourselves? What is that? I, I honestly, I think it was the school system and everything. Like I, I like I just from graduating that you got to go to graduating high school, that you got to go to college, that you have to decide your degree. And it's like, you're, you're already being put in all these boxes. Like I, I went into business in college. I had no idea what that was like, what I was going to do with it. I chose it because it was broad and I didn't know where I was going to go. So I think it's like society is trying to put us in these boxes when really it's like, we have to look in and be confident in our own decisions and uh, pay, pave that path that we want. So, uh, Well said. I'm talking to Dylan Efron. The show is called Flow State with Dylan Efron. You guys can check out the series on YouTube. Are there spiritual teachers or uh, influencers or gurus that you have read books or you're into? Ooh, let me see. Um, I've learned a lot from Darren Olean from, uh, from down to earth with my brother. Cause I, I, I got to travel the world with him. And like, I think one of the coolest things that from that show is how woke he is. Like he is so smart. He knew everything that was happening in that show 10 times more than the, the expert, but he was able to like, again, like bite that ego down and act like he didn't know and be like, Oh, that's awesome. But like, he's so smart down to, which bottle what like bottled water you should drink at the airport because it's less toxins like wow so many crazy health tips and stuff that that guy's a wealth of knowledge it's so <laughs> traveling with him around <laughs> i bet and how how does someone get that kind of wealth of knowledge like where does it come from i think it's a, an obsession really cuz mm. i i think he's got to be obsessed with with like living till 200 or something like that. You have to be obsessed to, to learn that much. It, I honestly don't know. I, I'm, I don't have that attention span. I mean, I'm a little obsessed too, but um, not to that degree, but maybe that's his Iron Man. You know what I mean? Maybe yeah. that's his, you know, thing, but it sounds like his ego is in check, you know, because people that seem um, humble um, figured it out. You know, it's yeah, the ones that yeah. brag and be like, I know everything, you know, who I yeah. work with. Those are the ones that need to work on a little bit of ego. Um, talk about this show. Why did you want to do Flow State? I wanted to do Flow State because I, I think uh, taking that first step into hosting, I really wanted to define like who I am, I guess. And that's all from going on adventures with my friends growing up. And like I grew up in a small town and it was either like go hang out at the movie theaters and do absolutely nothing with our lives or go on a road trip and see the world. So mm -hmm. my friends and I, every weekend we're just getting in over our heads. And uh, I think that kind of carried on into my life of just like, I have some really amazing friends and we're always doing something crazy. So, so why not capture it? Right. Yeah. Why not capture it? And I think, I think one of the cooler, cooler things about flow state in particular is like, the idea came from um, uh, comedians and cars getting coffee. Like, so I watched that show. Oh yeah. And I, I was like, I don't, I could never do that because I, when I meet someone at a coffee shop, I, I might not never see them again. I'll, I'll barely remember their name. I think it's like the most surface level way to meet someone where I was like, when I really meet someone, it's when we're both scared shitless, like about to go rock, <laughs> like to jump off a level. cliff. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. And, and once you have a shared experience where you're either conquering a fear or like in over your head, you, you're going to remember that guy and you're going to girl, whatever it is. And you're going to like laugh about it. And it's going to be a lifelong experience. So I think I really love getting to know people by getting in over your head. And I think that's a really way, Smart. like a really, yeah, a really good way to 
get to know someone. That's but actually been scientifically <laughs> proven, by the way, where they said that people that are in um, like fearful, you know, circumstances together bond, which makes complete oh, sense totally. to me. And then you can also see what kind of person you're dealing with also, you know, like yeah. I did, I actually hosted a dating show, uh, love in the wild back in the day when you were probably three and it was literally where we, they met people and they would jump off cliffs. They would jump out of planes. It was all these firsts for people that yeah. was terrifying. And I again, I got to see them get closer because of it. Yeah. I, it's been awesome. And I think the cooler thing too, is it's also defined who I am. Cause like, they might be pushing themselves as well, but half the time I'm the one that's scared and I'm like, Oh my God, I hope they don't <laughs> die. Or like I I'm scared and I'm trying not to tell them, but it, it it's giving me more uh, insight into who I am as a person and what I have to offer. So I I'm learning mm-hmm. about them. I'm learning about myself. I, I think it's been an incredible to film so far. So I love I, it. Uh, See couples listening right now. This is a good thing to do. Take your husband or your wife, if you're bored and go jump, go jump out of a plane rock climb in a scary place it, it really really does make a difference um flow state with dylan efron that's what it's called what about um the van are you living in the van it looks like you're in the van yeah i'm in the van right now i'm i'm bumming wi-fi off my friend so i mm-hmm. i uh i i go about half half and half more time i have an apartment in manhattan beach so i, I spend a lot of time there the van's been amazing for quarantine jealous it, i can just it's the only way to travel right now. So right? I can, yeah, I can stay one night out front of my mom's house, one night out front of my dad's house, like the other night, my friends. And it's like, it's just being able to, I, it's given me so much freedom Be this free. year. Yeah. It's been huge for my mental health and everything. Cause I'm so yeah. jealous. I'm so jealous. I mean, the only thing that would keep playing in my mind, I have movie quotes that constantly play in my mind. Like whether they're from airplane or SNL, and whenever I hear a, see a van or my someone says van, I immediately go to Chris Farley. You're gonna live in a van down <laughs> by the river, <laughs> which cracks me up. But you're in a van all over the country, correct? Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, and I love it. I just I just fixed my shower, so I've got the shower running. Shower. Again. Yeah. Oh <laughs> so my god, it, I it's, love it's pretty it. nice, and it, it it honestly is amazing. Like I can just park it in front of my friend's house and use their Wi-Fi. I can now. And I is your girlfriend start. with you in the van? I try to take her with me as much as I can, but she, she's got a nine to five. So, <laughs> so yeah. <it's, laughs> I mean, do you, do you have like moments, like a real couple that you're it's too close for comfort sometimes where you're like, Oh, I can't wait to, cause there's no space. There's no timeout zones. How do you deal? Yeah. Well, I think what you fit what I, you spend less time indoors. So like, you're always out and then you come back, come in here to sleep and eat. And so I, I think, again, I, th- I think it's healthiest to be outside most of the day anyway. So when you're living out of the van, you spend more time outside in the sun and, and not stuffed up in a van. So no, exactly. How, how did you and your brother get along um, growing up? Did you guys fight a lot? Or <laughs> we fought, did, yeah, we fought all the time. <laughs> my, I, it must be the most one-sided relationship because my brother's like, always looked out for me he like when i first Aww. moved to la he let me live with him um i don't know why he, he lets me hang around <laughs> but yeah he, he's he been the my like he supported me my whole life so he's been uh i love that yeah so it, it, he i i think i was always probably a nuisance because i i was always fighting with him i was what is the yeah. age difference dylan what's the date age difference between you guys it it's like almost five years, four and a half, but I was super tall growing up and he was super short. So we're always, he grew, he, but, but growing up, he was shorter. So we were always about the same size and we, we were pretty equal in our fights, but I was five years younger. So I had the sympathy <laughs> of my dad. I could easily just cry and get him in trouble. So, oh so my God. Yeah, we, we fought, we fought a lot. I remember the first time seeing him was on some MTV dating show. Do you remember when yeah. he did that? <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I, I don't even remember what it was called. That was back when TV was really Nicole, exciting. Nicole, your number <laughs> yeah. one fan would know the name of it. But um, she, she, there she is. There's Nicole. Hi, say hi. The, 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 <laughs> hey, Nicole. Dylan, hi. that's Nicole. <laughs> nice also, the show was Room Raiders. <laughs> yeah, I remember yeah. that. I remember that. I take it he didn't fall in love after that no. show, correct? <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure the show ends and they like never see each other again. But that's reality Probably. show. Uh, reality um, I, 
Um, I do want I do want Nicole to come back for one more one more second because Dylan, she is a, a fan. She's the one that got us all watching your show, all into your Thank business. You. <laughs> and um, is there is there one particular thing that you would like to know? Because I hogged up this whole interview because I should because it's my show. But I know that you, you know, your passion behind Dylan. So anything you want to know? Curious about? Yeah. So what I love watching about your show and everything is seeing you just living like your passion and doing everything you love. So what would you say to someone to encourage them to just go out? Like if you're working some job, you don't like, how do you leave that to go pursue something, even if you don't know how to start? Yeah, I don't. And I don't think you have to leave. Like for me, like when I was working at Warner Brothers, I was writing scripts and I was competing triathlons all while I had that nine to five. So I think you can start making those steps towards your dream while while you're doing whatever job you can. So like, I I think, uh, I think for me personally, it was, again, going back to like, not being afraid to fail and, and being a beginner, I completely just embrace the fact that I, I love surfing, and I'm so bad at it, but let's change that. So I, I think, I think uh, it was really just not being afraid to try something new and just embrace that, that it's okay to be a beginner. I might look dumb, but I'm going to have so much fun. And whoever's having the most fun is the, the real winner out there. So, and if, and if people don't know what exactly they want to do, would your advice then to be just try, just try things you love? Absolutely. Like, like, so again, in this journey of like be, being comfortable on screen and stuff, because again, I was so anti that growing up but i've found so much pleasure from it now that i'm like well why don't i try singing i'm like uh, i i've always loved singing in the shower but i suck at singing so i'm like well if i suck at singing maybe i should take voice lessons or something like that but like i'm almost 30 i'm like before i'm 30 i want to be fluent in spanish and i want to sing a good sing a song while playing the guitar and i'm like if i can do all that stuff by the time <laughs> i'm 30 that's an, amazing and like <laughs> i think it's i think just like I, so much of me was always telling me like, don't try this. Cause it's embarrassed. Like I'm embarrassed to fail or whatever. But once I'm just like, no, I, that like, I think that'll give me pleasure. I'm going to pursue it. You so. know, that's smart because sometimes it takes people 60 years to learn what you just said. Like, fuck it. Like I've, I've yeah. read so, <laughs> so many articles about people on their deathbeds going like, what's the one thing you regret? And they're like, not trying new things yeah. or not pursuing my passion. So if anyone gets anything out of this interview, it's that you all definitely love Dylan Efron and you need to go and try some shit that you love. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I love it. And, well, and, but, and on, yeah. honestly, like, again, sorry, going back to that. It's like, it's a daily thing that I have to remind myself. Like today I went rock climbing and I totally was such a, uh, I don't want to use the wrong words, but I chickened out and like, I, there was this, I, I have this project and I got scared and I backed down and I I've literally, I've been thinking about it ever since I and now I brought it up on this show, but I think it, I was just letting that fear conquer like my abilities. And, and I, I don't even know why I just brought that up. That's, that's how good. much it's on my head, but, <laughs> but that's good. So yeah, now let's play this game though. So now that it's coming up and cause we've all have that, we all experience this. Cause I have those two. They're, they're kind of like, this, this poke, someone's poking you on your back and you're trying to shake it off. You're like, I know it's there. So what then will you do? Will you learn the lesson from it or will you go and try to get it? Yeah. I'm going to go back tomorrow and, <laughs> and not be a chicken. I, I like, I, it's like bugging me so much. So I, I've got to fix that. But I, I think uh, some of the stuff that I've learned from just pursuing this is we're, we're all so capable. We're all, we all have this amazing ability to learn. And the thing that stops us is our head. And, and so many times it's just this fear for no reason, just like random fears. Yeah. For no reason. Like I know if I fall rock climbing, nothing is going to happen. It's going to scare me for a second. And I'm going to be, it's the softest landing, but that fear controlled me today. And I, I didn't achieve what I went out there to do. So. See, that makes my hands sweat just thinking about rock climbing. Like I literally start, <laughs> I play Minecraft with my son and we have to walk across like them. I'm like, <laughs> but there's lava underneath. Me too so, though. I'm still so scared by everything. <laughs> <laughs> it never goes away. 
No, it, really it doesn't. Does. It doesn't. But that really is our ego. Our ego was, you know, yeah. it manifested to keep us alive back in our caveman days, you know, mm-hmm. and now we don't need it. It's mental chatter that stops us. It's a big giant cock blocker is what it is. Get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Dylan, I so enjoyed you. Um, I'm so grateful that you came on our show. I can't wait to continue watching what you do and what you'll be up to. Um, you guys watch Flow State with Dylan Efren. It's on YouTube. You can follow him on social media, uh, Instagram at Dylan Efron and Twitter. Speaking of Instagram, will you do me one huge favor? Absolutely. Um, Nicole, since she's such a super fan, and, I, and I'm wrapping up my show this week. We did six years, <laughs> and we only brought people that were passionate to no each way. one of us. And no would way. you mind just following her on Instagram? She oh, would done. It done. would make That's nothing. her world. <laughs> oh my god! That's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> no. I honestly, I'm so thankful for you guys uh, having me on here. And um, again, it just reinforces the fact of like. I, I'm trying to tra- chase these dreams and the fact that you're recognizing it, it's, it's incredible. It just motivates me to keep going. So oh, I really I'm appreciate so, the time. So. I'm so glad. Any last words, Nicole? Um, I really like your show. <laughs> keep watching it. Thanks. <laughs> Hopefully this is the first of many. So I've got, yes. I've got some fun, fun ideas coming up. So Yay. I love Here it. I love it. Um, well, her Instagram name is Nicole Zarzecki. All right. Let me write it down. Nic- Nicole, I know because it is a kind of a big Polish name. Um, I, I've got the chain. I'll get. I'll get it. I'll get it. Yeah. <laughs> Nicole Zarzecki, and I followed you. So if you follow me, I can always DM you the full name so you can follow her. Make her dreams come yep. true, like the Disney princess she is. <laughs> Dylan Efron, check out Low State with Dylan Efron. Love you so much. Good luck to you. And this is a to be continued because I'm sure I'll be interviewing you again. Oh, I would love that. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. You got it. Thanks, Dylan. Talk to you soon. Bye, guys. Bye, bye.